Today, I'm going to be upgrading the SSD in my Surface Pro 9. I've got the 256 gig model here, and uh, I've managed to acquire for myself a nice one terabyte SSD. Uh, so we'll do the swap over, we'll see how easy it is. Uh, and I'm hoping that in addition to that extra capacity, I'm also gonna get a performance boost as well. So let's get into it. The SSD that I've bought is a Western Digital SN740 model, and uh, I paid just £99 for this, and I think that's a pretty cost-effective upgrade. Uh, Western Digital are claiming speeds in excess of 4,000 megabytes per second for this drive, which I'm pretty sure is faster than the standard drive that's included with the Surface Pro. Now, the installation itself is pretty straightforward on a Surface Pro. Now, let's just put a cloth down to protect the screen. And as we turn it over, and I'll line it up with the overhead camera so you can see. Uh, underneath the kickstand, there's this magnetic door. You just push your finger down on top of the door, take off the cover. And what we see in there is a 2230 sized NVMe M.2 drive. So changing it over is as simple as removing one screw and putting in your replacement drive. But of course, this drive has got nothing on it, uh, whereas this drive has our Windows installation. So it's not quite as simple as just swapping the hardware over. Uh, what we're going to need to do is get ourselves booted up into Windows and uh, make a recovery drive. So we'll use our standard Surface Pro keyboard and trackpad to do that. Now, there's a couple of different ways we could approach this. If we had an external enclosure, we could put our new drive into the external enclosure and try cloning the internal drive. Uh, I found that to be a little bit problematic in the past, so I'm not gonna go down that route. I don't actually need to clone the drive that's in here because I'm perfectly happy reinstalling my apps. I quite like the idea of a, a clean install now that I've uh, gotten used to the Surface Pro and know how I'm gonna use it. But remember, we also were hoping for a performance boost. So first of all, let's just do a quick crystal disk test on the internal drive that's there at the moment. And you notice that we're getting read speeds in the order of 3,400 to 3,500 megabytes per second, which is pretty good. And write speeds are at 2,500 megabytes per second. So let's keep those figures in mind. We'll do another test once we've uh, restored the system and we'll see how fast the new drive is. Uh, so I'm just gonna plug in this dongle, which has got uh, some type A ports for my USB flash drive. And we've also got HDMI output, which I can send over to a, a separate screen recorder over there so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, so let's get over to the Microsoft website. So we've gone to the uh, Microsoft Surface support website, I've browsed through a few pages. It's not immediately evident where to go to, but I've, I've found the right place without too much trouble. And uh, what it's asking for is my model, so I'll choose Surface Pro 9, and then it's asking me for my serial number, which of course is printed in micro dot on the back of the Surface Pro. So uh, this is where the uh, zoom lens on my iPhone camera comes in very useful. Let's just see if we can get a, a snapshot of that. Great, yep, I can read that. Uh, interestingly, actually, next to the serial number, it's got the size of the drive etched into the back of the Surface Pro, so it does say 256 gigabytes on the back there. Okay, so let's pop in the serial number. You can see that it's found my Surface Pro model, Surface Pro 9 i7, 16 gigs of RAM and 256 hard drive, and we've got a recovery image just for it. So we'll click on there to download. And we've got a 12 gigabyte download, which is gonna take a bit of time, so um, there will be a short intermission. Okay, so that's our recovery image downloaded. Now what we need to do is create our recovery drive. And helpfully, on this page here, Microsoft do give you all of the information that you need. So we'll just follow the instructions. So first of all, we go to the search box and we just type in recovery drive. And then you can see there's a link here for create a recovery drive, so we'll follow that and give it admin permissions. So you see there's a box here to tick that says backup system files to the recovery drive. We're gonna untick that because we're installing a fresh copy of Windows. And then we'll hit next. Okay, so it's found the USB flash drive. We'll click next. It's warning us that everything on the drive is gonna be deleted and that's fine. So we just hit create and off it goes. Now, if you're wondering how we got this uh, application up to create the recovery drive without actually doing anything with the downloaded file, that's because uh, the two things are separate. Uh, this is an inbuilt function to create a recovery drive, and once we've done that, we'll then unzip the contents of what we just downloaded and copy it onto our USB drive. So there we go, we've got a message saying that the recovery drive is ready. So now we just need to go into our downloads, And we've got our zip file here, which we'll just extract. And 
and it's taking quite a while to do the uh, unzipping so uh, I'm just going to plug in the uh, Surface Pro because hopefully that'll just give it uh, a bit of a performance boost. Uh, and that is the thing with Windows machines, they do need to be plugged in to get the most out of them. So that's the uh, unzipping completed and uh, uh, let's select all of the files. Just use a control C and over onto the recovery drive and we'll do a control V. That's going to take a few minutes. So the copy is finished finally and I'm getting this replaced files dialog. It says the destination has 116 files with the same names. I think this is all of the boot files that were created when we did the create recovery drive. So I'm guessing we're going to overwrite them. I'll try that. Let's see if it works. Okay, so that's the copy complete. Before we actually swap over the drive, what I'm gonna do is just try booting from this recovery drive, make sure it works before I go through that process in case we have to do something again. So we'll just shut the uh, Surface Pro down completely. And as far as I'm aware, the process for booting from a USB drive is to hold the volume down key when you press power and you keep it held down until you see the Windows logo. So let's give that a try. Uh, and something else actually is that we're supposed to plug in uh, the original power supply, I think. So let's just uh, swap that over rather than use this hub. Let's use the proprietary Surface Pro adapter. Okay, and we'll power on whilst pressing the volume down button. So it looks to me like the recovery process has worked. We're into the language selection screen. Uh, it's not coming up on our screen recorder, so there's no HDMI output from recovery mode. So we'll, we'll have to set up our overhead camera a little bit better so you can see what's going on. Uh, but of course, what we're gonna do now is shut down the Surface Pro and we're gonna actually swap over the SSDs. And again, I'll try and line it up for the camera so you can see roughly what I'm doing. It's one of these precision drivers. It's a very small one, uh, the size two. I think it's called a T2. Is it Torx? Yeah, Torx, T2, that's what you need. So we'll just pop that in and undo the screw. Endeavor not to lose the screw because it is tiny. And the drive should just lift out. It's a little bit tricky. You've got to kind of lift it up whilst you're, you're pulling it back. Now, there we go. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have said this is particularly easy. There we go. Anyway, that's out. Now, one thing I do notice straight away on this drive, let me hold it under this camera so hopefully you can, you can see that, uh, is it's got a, a heat spreader on the back of it. And I could take that heat spreader off and apply it to the new drive, but I'm not going to. I don't think I need to. That might come back to haunt me. Uh, let's get the new drive in. So I don't know how well you can see that, but the new drive, of course, is just a bare circuit board on the back. Uh, I'm not convinced that that aluminium heat spreader makes a huge amount of difference, but uh, who knows. All right. Let's pop this one in. Should be easier to get in than it was to get out. Apparently, uh, Microsoft recommend that you have an authorized repairer do this job for you. And I can see why they're, they're doing that. I think if you've never done any kind of upgrades before, you might find this a little bit daunting. Uh, it's it's fairly straightforward. It's not as easy as popping one drive out and popping another one in, of course. There we go. That's the new drive installed. Let's put the cover back in. We'll get ourselves set up for the recovery process. So we're just gonna do exactly what we did before when we tested the recovery drive. So we'll plug in the power supply. Plug in our dongle over here. Okay, hold the volume down button, press the power button. There we go, we've got the Windows logo. We've got our little spinning graphic coming up. And there we go, we're into the uh, recovery screen. We're gonna go uh, English UK, because that's us. Keyboard layout UK again. So we're now presented with a couple of options, recover from a drive or troubleshoot. We're going to recover from a drive. And once we clicked on that, we then get two more options, just remove my files or clean the drive fully. So uh, you might be using this with the internal SSD to wipe your system before you sell it. 
in which case you want to clean the drive fully. That will write zeros right across the SSD and means no one can recover any data that you might have left on there. Uh, so we're just going to use the just remove my files option. Okay, so ask us if we're ready to reset. We just press recover and let's hope it works. So that probably was about what, three minutes, something like that, to do the restore there. Now it seems to be booting up again. Okay, so Windows is obviously loading up device drivers now, and uh, I've just noticed our external screen recorder is back on. So let's hit record over there so you can see what's going on. Still getting ready. I find this process so frustrating when you get progress bars and it appears to get to 100% and then it just starts another progress bar or puts you into a screen like this where you just get a spinning graphic and it says getting ready. Anyway, I'm just thinking this upgrade of £99, I actually also still have the original drive, of course, which I'm going to keep as a spare in case uh, I ever have any issues. I'll be able to use that again to reboot the machine and to recover it. So if ever that drive dies, I've still got a, a working copy. Uh, that really puts that upgrade price into perspective. When you think what Apple charge for going from 256 gig up to one terabyte, it's, uh, uh, we'll put the price up on the screen. It's quite a lot though, isn't it? And you don't get to keep the original drive for that money. Anyway, looks like uh, we're getting there. We've got a welcome piece of text now with our spinning graphic. And we're into Windows setup. So I think this is just personalizing it for me. So let's just go through and set up Windows. Actually pretty impressed with that process. It didn't take very long at all. Okay, so we've connected up to our network. It's now gonna check for updates. Of course it is. It's bound to be loads of updates. And uh, that's the process done. So that's the standard Windows setup. So what that recovery process did was just copy the files over onto the internal SSD, that new SSD that we've installed. And we've gone through the standard Windows setup uh, and now it's just getting it ready. So as soon as that's finished, we'll download uh, Crystal Dismark and we'll just test the new drive and just compare it to how the old drive performed. Okay, so Crystal Dismark is installed and we can see we're gonna be using our C drive for the test. Uh, so we'll run the same test that we did before. I think we did uh, three passes with the one Gibibyte test and we'll just run the sequential. And what we're finding is we're getting read speeds of three and a half thousand megabytes per second. So that's basically no different to what it was before. So I'm gonna call foul on Western Digital's claims. Let's see if the write speed is faster though. And it is, we're getting uh, just shy of 3,400 megabytes per second. Just over 3,400, yeah. So I'm relatively happy with that. Uh, so overall, we've got a decent boost in write performance, even if the read performance stays broadly the same. And even though we're not quite achieving the figures that I was expecting, in reality, the difference between three and a half thousand megabytes per second and 4,000 megabytes per second in real world usage you're never gonna be able to tell the difference. So I'm not too fussed about that. And I'm very happy to have gone from 256 gigs of storage all the way up to a terabyte for just 99 pounds outlay. That seems like a pretty good deal to me. When it comes to the upgrade process itself, it was as expected, pretty straightforward. Perhaps a little bit fiddly swapping the drive over, but uh, nothing too taxing there. Uh, of course, there is that software upgrade process or swapping the Windows installation and doing the recovery drive. Uh, I think most people would be able to do that if you follow the instructions on Microsoft's website. So all that's left for me to do now is reload all of my apps and get the Surface Pro set up the way that I want it. And of course, now I've got all that extra space to play with. I think it's great that Microsoft allow you to upgrade the SSD in these devices. Wouldn't it be fantastic if Apple did the same thing with the uh, iPad and the Mac? Anyway, let me know what you think about that in the comments section, and I'll see you next time for some more geekery.